Welcome to Constant Variables, a podcast where we take a non-technical look at mobile app development. I'm Tim Bornholt. And I'm Rob Bentley. Time to get down and nerdy. So today's episode is going to cover uh, which platform you should build your mobile app for if you're starting from from square one. And we're talking about iOS and Android mainly. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into why here in a little bit. We figured we'd start this episode off because so much of uh, the reasoning why you would choose to develop for one platform or the other comes down to market share. So I figured we could go over the numbers a little bit so you can kind of see worldwide uh, as of at least this recording. I mean, we're talking today, November 2nd, 2017. Uh, it, the numbers change all the time. But as far as right now... Um, you know, a lot's changed between now and eight years ago. Yeah, definitely. You know, eight eight years ago, BlackBerry was the the big dog. I guess more like ten years ago, BlackBerry was the smartphone player, and then there's Windows uh, as well. But then iOS came out and pretty much dominated right away. And then Android all of a sudden just shot out of nowhere and took over everything. And that's kind of where we stand today. Is uh, when you hear market share, I guess, you, you hear it in two ways. There's market share for new device sales and then for active, what people are actually using out in the real world. So we wanted to cover what those metrics look like. And definitely worldwide, Android is the major player right now. Absolutely. In terms of selling new devices, Android's 80 to 85 percent of all device sales worldwide, which is just insane. And everything else you can pretty much attribute to being iOS. Right. There's it, it, iOS is about 15 to 20 percent. And then the, the remaining. So like BlackBerry used to have the vast majority of the market share. Now they are selling phones that you can just attribute to a rounding error in terms of the worldwide amount of phones that are sold. Um, and Windows Phone as well. It used to be something when we started our business that you needed to pay attention to Windows Phone. Maybe we should consider building for it but then uh nowadays it's virtually uh negligible for developing for anything but android and ios we kept our eye on it but a lot of people i talked to that either had windows phone or were thinking about getting it stopped because they said there weren't any apps for it yeah it, it's a huge chicken and egg problem which we'll cover on a future episode of constant variables so that's kind of the, at least new device market, uh, active cell phone usage uh, for smartphones. It's it's a similar story. Um, if we're talking worldwide, you're looking at about 75% of all people that are, whatever phone they're currently using at any given time is an Android phone. And 25% of those users are using an iOS device. And then there's a small, again, fraction going to everything else, BlackBerry, Windows Phone, everything else. But then when you talk about just the United States, if that's your market, the share is a lot more even right around 50-50 and it's usually one out does the other and then the next quarter it's reversed. Exactly. So in, in and that's not just the US, that's really most developed nations that that from the research that we've seen, it's, you know, Europe, uh, I mean, England, <laughs> yeah. uh, Germany, uh, Australia, those kind of countries. But then if you're talking about developing nations, um, that's you're looking more at, at a, a bigger share for towards Android devices. So that being said, we're all kind of now on the same page with what users generally worldwide at a very broad level, um, what kind of devices they use. Now, when it comes to your business and your app, how do you decide, Rob, what platform to start developing for? Well, it really depends, again, where your users live, but also what your plan is to monetize the app. Right. And and really, the big thing is is just your users. <laughs> That's yeah. like the, the only thing that matters at this point in the game is what platform are your users using? That's the platform you need to build for. Right. If you're looking for a free app model where you need to hit a lot of users, you're going to want to target Android. Also, if your monetization strategy depends on app retention, Android is doing better than iOS, at least right now in that category. But conversely, if your monetization strategy depends upon people actually paying somehow to use your app, you might want to go iOS. Exactly. If you're talking about what platform to develop for for your app, you really just need to figure out where, where your users are at and how they're going to be paying you. Uh, from our research where your users live really matters. So if you're in, like we said, in a developed nation, the U.S., the U.K., Australia, 
consider starting with iOS first and building out that platform and, and then moving into Android. However, if your customers are more international, if you're looking at Southeast Asia or Africa, anything like that, you might want to consider starting with Android and then switching into iOS afterwards. Or even if you just want to hit as many users in the whole world as possible and you can only go with one platform right now, start with Android. Yeah, definitely. So the other way to really tell what platform you should develop for is just straight up ask your potential users, what do they use? Get a general feel and you'll probably see similar numbers to what we're talking about. It's probably going to be 50-50 if you're talking about uh, companies in the United States, users in the United States using your app. It's going to be in that 50-50 mix. Um, so then really it's kind of a coin toss. And then, of course, if you know the demographics of your target market, there's a ton of research on demographically categorizing people and what smartphones they use too. So that can be a help to just Googling around for it, honestly. Yeah, absolutely. So the other two factors that you might want to consider with this is not just related to your users, but related to other things. So one of which is your development budget. So building for each platform is an independent task. You know, especially if you come to a shop like the Jed Mahonis group, we are uh, fully native development, which means we write out code from scratch for each platform. So if you're talking about building for iOS and building for Android, you're talking about building two different apps and that's double roughly uh, your development costs. The other thing you need to think about too will be after you get the app developed, how are you going to support it and what is that going to look like? Android is typically harder to support, not only because of the number of devices that are currently active, but also because the user base and the devices are so fragmented, usually you have to support uh, a lot earlier versions than you would with iOS. Yeah. When you're looking at iOS, if you uh, take a look at the total number of iOS devices that were ever made, I mean, we're probably maybe into the hundreds, definitely less than 200 unique individual iOS devices, including iPads and iPod touches that would be able to potentially run your app move into Android, and you're talking about at least in the six figures. Yeah, hundreds you know, of thousands, it, if not millions. Yeah, it's got to be up in the millions. I, I didn't look before we recorded, but it's got to be in that range. And you're talking about not an insignificant number of those devices actively using your app. If you hit any kind of scale, um, we have some apps that have that kind of million monthly active user number and the number of Android devices that are currently running that app are in the at least middle 10,000s range, like, you know, 50, 60,000 like unique device configurations that we need to, or that's just straight devices. That's not even thinking that some of those devices are running Android KitKat. Some of them are running Lolly pop and the the fragmentation issue which is what they call that is uh is is an issue on android and that will weigh a factor into should you start with ios or should you start with android feature wise there used to be a lot bigger difference between the two platforms but what we've seen is it's kind of one will come out with a new feature on their phone and then the other will copy it in their next phone and that'll kind of leapfrog each other so it's kind of six and one half dozen of the other as far as just phone features right now. Yeah. I mean, there's there's something to be said about there's some advantages like accessibility is still something that I think iOS has an edge on Android for. Um, sometimes developing for like the Bluetooth hardware can be a little bit easier on, on iOS, again, because you just have less configuration that you need to worry about with supporting other devices. So if you're doing an Internet of Things application, um, it might be easier to start on iOS. But then again, uh, dealing with external hardware components and the locked down iOS environment might mean that you want to start with Android first. So the advice that we're talking about here is really like a general purpose app that if we're talking about a general purpose app that doesn't really tie into any device specific things where it's like, like Apple released AR kit. So if we're talking about building an augmented reality app, maybe it's easier on iOS these days than Android, but you listen to this show 12 months from now, I'm sure Google's working on their frameworks to make AR on Google uh, on Android a lot easier. So things are constantly evolving. You really have to just see what kind of app you're building and see what kind of features those platforms have. But to Rob's point, this, this day and age, the platforms are getting pretty mature and there's not a whole lot of like whiz bang, totally new features that you need to worry about. So that's not a huge consideration, but it's something to to pay attention to while you're deciding which platform to build for. 
And there's a lot of things we could cover with that, but we can let you know if you wanted to ever reach out to us and talk about it specifically for good, whatever you need. Good plug. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I guess, really, Rob, what does it come down to? Should we build for iOS or should we build for Android? Well, usually it is good to start with one platform when you're just getting your idea out there and testing it and making sure it gets traction in the marketplace. Which one, like we've said probably a dozen times already, it really just depends on doing some market research, figuring out who your customers are and what device they use. Yeah, so looking at I should definitely build for iOS or I definitely should build for Android. Um, from what we've seen, if you are really trying to make the most money off of your sales of your app, whether that's through a subscription or a freemium or premium type of deal, iOS is where you should focus. If you're building like a retail app as well, people tend to spend more money inside iOS devices than they do on Android devices. Um, also, if you're located inside the U.S. or inside a developed nation, um, you probably would have a better shot with making money on the iOS side of things than on the Android side of things. Conversely, if you're trying to reach a very international audience or if you're trying to reach as many people as you possibly can through one platform, then Android is absolutely the way to go for that regard. And ultimately, if you're able to make both work, then you'll pretty much be able to hit every single smartphone user in the world. Exactly. So that's the better way to go. But what we're just discussing is if your budget only allows for one platform over the other. Right. I mean, there's often if you're a large brand or if you have uh, an app idea that has a lot of competition in both or like your main competition is already in both places. If you're kind of the, the cost to play in the space, um, if you have to, then you have to. Um, and, and also, like Rob said, if you're trying to target everybody, then you have to be on both if you want to hit everybody. So Final thoughts. Uh, one thing I wanted to bring up was the Instagram approach, which it's a little dated now, but it's still relevant, I think, in, in 2017, moving into 2018 here. Uh, when you are uh, – Instagram, basically, when they started out, they were iOS only. And a lot of people probably don't remember this because that's how fast tech moves. But For Instagram, a while, honestly. Yeah, Instagram, yeah. Uh, up until one week before they were announced that they were purchased by – Facebook, actually, they hadn't even announced that they were going to do an, an Android app. And people have been asking, we need our Android app. We need our Android app. And they're like, we don't have any plans at this time because all they were doing was focusing on the experience uh, that they were delivering on iOS. And that's really comes down to perfecting the filters, perfecting the system itself, making sure that they were able to scale and handle the amount of users that they had and keeping it contained to one platform it really paid off for them. And I think it's still a model that a lot of companies pursue. And even Rob, we were talking before the podcast about how we do it as a development team. You pretty much like we, we build our apps, we focus on iOS, perfect that at least that little bit of the app and then have Android come in after and, and finish it. Yeah. We'll start off just building one platform out, showing that to our clients. If they approve of it, then we'll have the Android side catch up to that usually so that we can, make mistakes and go through iterations and different design tweaks on just one platform instead of having to go through all of that and trying to save money that way. Exactly. It's like we said, it's really expensive to build for both platforms at the same time. So if you are uh, budget conscious, which everybody is, start with just one platform and, and build out from there. And whether it's iOS or Android, uh, we don't care. Yeah. Um, it really, what we want is the best experience for your users. So it's something that while you are uh, in their conceiving plans of building an app, it's something to bear in mind, which platform is going to make you the most money and which platform is going to set you up for the best chance of success. Yeah, I think that's all we have for today. All right. We did it. <laughs> uh, show notes for this episode can be found at constantvariables.co. You can get in touch with us by emailing hello at constantvariables.co. I'm at Tim Bornhold on Twitter. Rob is at Scott Mahonis. Today's episode was edited by the amazing Jordan Doust. This episode was brought to you by the Jed Mahonis Group, who builds mobile software solutions for the on-demand economy. Learn more at jmg.mn. <laughs> <laughs>